it does seem that it will be a very different looking parliament as of later this week with Labour almost certainly in government and Conservative MPs moving to the opposition benches, those who do come back that is. And it appears likely that there will be many more MPs from the minorities, Asians particularly, and among those, Sikhs. The last House of Commons had two Sikh MPs, Preet Kaur Gill from Birmingham Edgbaston and Tan Singh Desi from Slough. That number is likely to go up manyfold. There are about 30 Sikh candidates standing for the various political parties in the UK for the general election this year. We have about 16 or 18, I believe, for the Labour Party. We have a handful for the Conservatives, for Reform and for the Liberal Democrats. Uh, they are across the board. But my impression is that at the moment, when it comes to the general election, after the election, we will have at least 10 new Sikh MPs in Parliament. 10 in total. And it will be an incredible time because that's the largest number we have ever had. And it's going to be an absolute sea change in Britain. So mark my words, there will be a real difference and a change in the way that the Sikh community is being connected with and spoken to within the UK as a result. The Labour Party in particular has fielded a number of Sikh candidates from winnable seats. The last two MPs in the Commons were both from the Labour Party and those two are likely to retain their seats. Labour has become the party of choice for Sikhs seeking election. I can tell you about candidates who are standing in seats where there is a, a likelihood or a good likelihood of success. There is Satvir Kaur, Satvir Kaur, who is in Southampton Test. There is Gurinder Singh Jolson, who is in Smethwick. There is Warinda Juss, who is in Wolverhampton West. And there are several others that I can mention. Obviously, there is Tan Desi in Slough, and there is Preet Kaur Gill in uh, Birmingham Edgebaston. But there are so many across the country, and I am just looking forward to seeing how many of them come through. A Sikh MP will, of course, speak for the constituency first, but will also inevitably speak up on Sikh issues. Obviously, they're going to be representing their constituencies. They're not representing the Sikh community when it comes to their day-to-day -day politics. By just having so many Sikh politicians in prominence in the House of Commons is going to be a time of great pride. And it's also going to be a time for us to reflect on what we can do to better improve the lives of Sikhs and other people in the UK come July the 5th. A strong Sikh voice within the ruling party would, of course, be remarkable in itself. But such a presence can have other dimensions. It can mean that the shadow of 1984 that has never quite left India may now fall more heavily upon the British Parliament than it has thus far.